The next thing is to bring out the real Susanna Cahill oh. <laughs> Stephen, so I think he needs his And that, and by the way, that's his, um, that last song in the credits, that's his song that he wrote, so I'm sure um, it'll be available on iTunes. <laughs> and then, you know, I've been very lucky enough to, you know, be in I come from a small farm in Ireland, I never thought I'd be, have the opportunity to be over here working in America. And what it gives you is it gives you the ability to, to meet some incredible people. And I don't think there's many you as incredible as the next person who changed your life, who's changed my life, or like in some really way, shape, or form. And he continues to change lives on a daily basis and save lives. So Dr. Suel Nishak. that because I just want to keep that because it's a special moment. He's a very special person and he's, um, you know, we're in a time of the war right now where we need heroes and that guy's a hero, you know. Um, I guess I, I just wanted to start out really simply by asking about kind of your approach to directing this because, you know, it, it comes from a true story, it comes from the original material and, yeah. and um, bringing your voice to that can sometimes be tricky, so... Yeah. Well, my approach to this was, was, was odd because I think my approach had to be an invisible approach. You know, I didn't want to hijack this film just for my own creative vision, you know? I think, you know, a director could have come on this and kind of really went into the brain and kind of started messing around with POV, so I just didn't want to hijack this story. The story is too important for Susanna, for Stephen, for Dr. Najjar, for everybody involved in her life and also the fans of the book and people that are dealing with this illness all around the world. So I just didn't want to hijack it. What I wanted to do was just tell the story as simple as possible and just put us, the audience, in the world observing Susanna and Chloe's performance. I just wanted to be invisible as a director with this. And look, whether that goes against me or what, I don't care because the most important thing was tell the story. The story itself is powerful enough. It's such an amazing performance from Chloe, and I was curious if the two of you could speak a little bit about your relationship and, and putting it together. Um, yeah, I mean, I think I think what we found really pertinent to finding uh, how to portray this amazing heroine of a woman um, on screen was really to talk to her and to understand her and to understand what a bright light she is and to really show the pre-anti-NMDA Susanna. Because that's you know that's why you, you really see the the effect and the, the gravity that this, this this horrible disease has is when it, it it steals every fabric of her being away from her and with someone as bright and as lively and as as just you know present as Susanna is we wanted to capture that that pre and MDA uh, Susanna so I think we really just yeah. wanted and to talk to her. We kind of work together and we kind of you know yeah. it's, I, I, you know I think we. we, we we just really work together and we just we just wanted to tell the story as honestly as possible and, and look I think this story, you know, if you're the, you can easily say, yeah, is this a disease of the week type of thing, but it's it's more than that, you know what I mean? It's this, it's more than that. People are really suffering here, people with this disease, it's not well known, it's not even recognized in many medical curriculums all around the world. It's kind of it's important, you know. And I think um, we just approached it with honesty and truthfulness and 
which I think I said to you the very first moment, I said we have to respect her story, her, her family, the people around her, and the illness, because it needs to be respected to be, you know, conquered. Um, I, I know sometimes it can be an overwhelming experience seeing your story up on the screen. I was, I was hoping all, all three of you could comment a little bit about uh, how this has been for you. It's been mind-blowing. <laughs> I mean, really a uh, remarkable experience, and, and, and watching it in a room full of people was some, unlike anything I've ever experienced in my life and probably ever will again. So, thank you all. <laughs> well, I always, when people ask me, I always say that in my memory it's like a movie. And now I don't have to say that. <laughs> but I thought it was amazing. I thought that you were so great. And the cast was so great. It's just oh, really awesome. <laughs> I don't know what to say. I'm so overwhelmed and I'm so touched. It's really humbling experience for me. I'm very much honored by the warm welcome. But mostly, I have to start saying the real hero of this movie and this story is really Susanna. Susanna. <laughs> Susanna, through her story, touched many hearts and saved so many lives. And as I said earlier in my prior interviews, she actually became the voice for those inflicted with autoimmune disorders of the brain who could not, who cannot advocate for themselves. What an inspirational person she is. I'm really privileged to be her doctor and I'm so thrilled most of all, that she had me for recovery to bring her story to life and save more lives. I love you, Susanna. Okay, well, I'm going to open it up to the audience. Does anybody have any questions? Back there? I think we see so many episodes of House. I mean, they just do, they just do everything. You know what I mean? They, I mean, you know, you could see anything in that. Which is, and they do, they do. But this is, this is not just. Yeah, it is. It's a disease movie, but it's, it's more than that. It's what that woman is talking about. It's there's a lot of people around the world trapped within the world of autoimmune diseases. I, as I was showing you, people reach out to me on a daily basis now with letters, with emails, with everything. And you know, we really made this movie for them to give them a voice, and um, we just hope it does that. So thank you for your bravery, thank you. A group of survivors in the audience today, is that true? I think they're all... I just want to shout out to you guys, making a trip out here. Just so we can have you over here for the end of it. So come on up. Come on up. 
Come on, it's in park. Come on. While they're making their way up to the stage, does anybody have any other questions? Um, over here, right in the crowd room. So the, the question was, um, with regards to the disease, is the gold standard still biopsy, or are they doing research for other methodology that's less invasive? This is an excellent question. You know, we rely on traditional diagnostic testing to diagnose autoimmune disorders of the brain. But here, the news, 50% of the times, brain MRI totally normal as in Suzanne. Blood test, and 25% of the times, can be normal. And the reason is, there are too many antibodies targeting the brain, still we don't know about. And that field of autoimmune encephalitis is expanding rapidly. When Suzanne was diagnosed, that was the first case in a major academic center, never seen before. And we have to realize that Suzanne at that time on the verge of sustaining permanent neurological and psychiatric complications, on the verge of being placed in psychiatric unit and even facing death. So we have no time, no, we cannot afford waiting. So at the same time, we did brain biopsy to confirm that actually it's inflammation in order to allow me to use powerful immune therapy, otherwise would not be approved. But now, with increasing recognition of that disorder and the commercial availability of the blood test for NTNMD receptor antibody, there will be no need for brain biopsy. There are around 14, 15 cases in the whole literature or patient who underwent brain biopsy to confirm diagnosis, but that's early, early on in the discovery of that illness. But the tragedy is that there are a lot of autoimmune disorders involving brain, and the lady spoke of, where the brain MRI normal and blood test normal, still we do not have blood test. We refer to that as seronegative autoimmune encephalitis. Those patients still locked up in psychiatric unit. And this is not the fault of only psychiatrists, it's the fault of all of us in the medical field. Because sometimes we allow the politics to take over the patient's care. Neurologists on one end, psychiatrists from the other end, rheumatologists and immunologists from the third end. We do not communicate because we're all separate fields. It's about the time to tear the wall between all disciplines and bridge the gap and treat the patient as a whole and not to treat the symptoms. It's about the time we admit a great deal of psychiatric symptoms are biological in nature and have an atomic footprint, mm -hmm. footprint in the brain. Mm -hmm. They are neurological and not always psychiatric in origin, although the presentation can be purely psychiatric or, or, or overtly psychiatric as a Suzanne. Because, you know, um, I suppose for the next little bit, you're probably going to be the face of NTN and DA autoimmune diseases, but what's really important is, is that we bring out survivors. There are many faces of this disease. This has impacted many people of many ages, so I just want to bring them out. This wasn't planned or anything, but I just think this is really important. So. Are there other questions in the audience? Right here? It's so, so the question is, um, th if this audience member was Noticing that the survivors on stage are predominantly female, 
um, and wondering why. <laughs> Um, and, and wondering whether um, uh, how much ge there's gender bias in, in, in misdiagnosing this as something that's mental and not a physical. You know, that disorder, as I said, affect females four times as often as males. In part, autoimmune disorders in general affect females more than males. We have, a guy, we have a guy, we have a guy, we have a guy here. But around 20% would be male and can affect any age group, tend to be more in Susanna's age, but now we find it in to toddlers, elderly, and males, and so forth. I think we don't know why the gender play a role, but we know generally autoimmune disorder is much more common in female. And in antenatal receptor encephalitis, because one of the etiology is a tumor <coughs> affecting ovaries, we refer to as teletomas. Although that tumor can affect males, but at much lesser frequency. We have nothing, we're not guilty about the race here. It is what it is. It affects females, and I apologize for that. <laughs> <laughs> um, are there any more questions in the audience? Yes. Back there. So the, the question was, um, how did you get there as an actor to get into the role to get? Um, I mean, you know, it, it's really just letting go. You know, I tried to talk to Susanna and I asked her, you know, do you remember anything from that entire time period of going to the hospital and, and, and anything during that entire time, which was like almost two months. And the thing she told me is that she didn't remember any of it. It was this black period. Um, and so what I did is I, you know, I kind of went through and, and talked to her. Uh, talked to Dr. Najjar, and he sent me a lot of um, videos and, and, and just paperwork and, and the nurses and what they said about what she would do and, and her aggressive behavior and all this stuff. And I kind of just pieced it together and realized that we just have to try to do what feels most natural. But I also think we shot this film in like was it 16, 17 days. I mean, what she went through in that period of time was just scary. And, uh, yeah. and uh, we also were in New York doing all that stuff as well. So, I mean, she needs to be commended on that for just, she's an incredible, fearless, fearless woman. Someone told, me, someone told me recently that you have like 55 credits, which is kind of crazy or something like that. But she's fearless and she just goes for it. And, you know, this is a, this is a performance where Someone might look at it and go, it's very big in places, but yeah, because this is the research that we did, this is the research that we spoke to Susanna about, we have to go big because what happens is to Susanna was big, you know? Yeah. Um, we have time for only one more question, but this gentleman here would like to ask something. Uh, I just want to say to Gerard and Chloe that you guys did this film justice, you guys absolutely killed it. Um, and I also want to uh, ask Susanna, I've never really asked you this before, um, before having this disease, you know, you were by your, you were yourself and everything. Now coming back afterwards, do you ever, do you think that you are how you were before this all happened? You know, I don't think you can you can go through this kind of traumatic experience and then all the amazing experiences like this that have come from it and remain the same person. So I think that I am a fundamentally different. I mean, I think fundamentally I'm a similar person, but I think that I had to have changed. I mean, this, so many remarkable things have happened out of a very bad terrible, dark experience. So, I, coming out of the other end, I, 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 am a, I think I have to say I've changed. Yeah, I think hopefully for the better. <laughs> for the better. So Christopher's a survivor as well here. So he just has this organization that I didn't know about called IMNTNDA. I really appreciate it that if you guys could take out your mobile phones, take a picture of us together here, and just put it up on whatever social media thing you have and just go hashtag brain on fire, hashtag I am NTMDA. I really appreciate it. Thanks, Thank you. Um, so, can I ask a question? Yeah. Um, so, I'm a 
can I chip in and just say, um, Susanna's on the board of an amazing, amazing organisation called Autoimmune Encephalitis Alliance, and I represent the Encephalitis Society, Encephalitis Society, and we're here representing thousands of people that have been affected by encephalitis, and this film is going to make so much, such a big impact, and save so many lives, so thank you for all that you've done, and thank you for having us. So um, I'll, I'll let you quickly take a photo and then I, I want to thank everyone on stage for coming and sharing this story with us and, and speaking to us about it. Thank you so much. <laughs>